What's up, guys? I'm Emerald Marie, and be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com. This is your African King's Come, Michael Blackson. You're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Get real with it, my son. I think, yeah, Adam Schefter is reporting that this move was was made with the intent of the Niners selecting a receiver. So yeah. it's got to be a receiver. Um, Trip, you, you know, you and I both kind of said it. I would assume it's Denzel Mims from Baylor. Yeah, but maybe um, T. Higgins because he's still available. Um, but T. Right Higgins now. was rated a little lower. And and Mims really impressed at the combine because I think Mims actually worked himself into possibly being a late first rounder with his combine workout. Yeah. Well, you know what though, but they, uh, yeah, that's a rough one. But they got they got um, Justin Jefferson already. So do they take a, Do they really take another wide receiver with this? No, they uh, didn't take Justin. Remember, they took. Oh they no! Took, excuse um, me. The the the, the forty nine. They took uh, Kinlaw. They took the D tackle Kinlaw. Yes. Okay. So yeah. So maybe they do actually go right. Okay, oh, they took uh, they Brandon Ayuk. Ayuk, yeah, probably. from Arizona, yeah, yeah. And uh, let me see, he is. What, is he? what do you got him like that? They got him as the sixth best wide receiver in the draft. Play, play, play pool. Now, Saturday. now he was to start the draft. You said he was the sixth best rated. What is that in comparison to Denzel Mims, though? Uh, Mims is the seventh uh, ranked. So they were, yeah, pretty much right there. Yeah, so same thing. Actually, they got T. Higgins uh, ranked as fifth. I mean, you know, this this different ones. I guess this is the one I'm looking at. They got him as the fifth uh, best wide receiver. So Jordan Love. Uh, the next three picks definitely ain't Jordan Love. So so does he does he wind up falling? out of the first round because we know Miami's not picking them. They already got their quarterback. Seattle and Baltimore is not picking them. They got their quarterbacks. Tennessee has – they just re-signed Ryan Tannehill. They just, they they just re-signed Tannehill, yep. So maybe he goes 30 to Green Bay and he sits behind Aaron Rodgers for the next couple of years? Maybe. But it also depends on what's there for Green Bay because I think Green Bay's in win-now mode. So I don't, I don't know if they would use – the first round pick on a quarterback that they know is gonna have to sit for at least two years. Yeah. So then, the uh-huh. then that's the case. They gotta go. Then I gotta see them going wide receiver because Aaron Rodgers needs help at that wide right. receiver position. So they, I would, they, they could, they could go either side of the ball. They do need a receiver next to Devonte Adams. Um, they could go the tight end, uh, Komet. Yeah. They could go. Um, they could go defensive side of the ball. Cause remember, they, they got. They pretty much got run off the field by the Niners both times they played them this year. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, they, they showed up their pass rush last year in free agency. They could go secondary if, you know, I don't know if he's going to keep dropping, but if McKinley's still there, they might feel he's the best available and bring mm. him into their secondary. Um, so I, don't th- I don't know if he makes it that far down or the green. Yeah, because... I, again, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know if he'll make it that far down, but I'm saying if he's there, it becomes an oh, interesting then, then, you, then you take him because now yeah. you got the best safety in the draft and they could use help yeah. with that in that secondary. So we sh- yeah. I, I think for Miami, this is going to be either Patrick Queen or um, McKinley. Yeah, because now they, they already they got they, they got they got the lineman, they got the quarterback. So they got all these picks. They got to start filling out the rest of the holes. So yeah, yeah they definitely gonna need somebody to to fill in for for Minka, and they were able to get him without using one of their earlier picks. So that's it. That's that. That's gonna be an interesting one. I still I want to see who the Patriots would have picked, because now they don't pick until until second round. So I want to see who the Patriots wind up going with when they do pick. So I, I think I'm more interested in finding out what the what the Patriots are going to do at quarterback. Well, yeah, that's – you know what? Sure, if he's available, if, if Love drops all the way down, because it's possible that Love could drop to the second round because the only team, again, that may have needed a quarterback 
you know, for the future would have been Green Bay. But again, I, I do think you were right with the the win now mode. So they they go on a different route. Um, and then you come into the second round. The the Bengals have the first pick in the second round. They're not taking the quarterback. So maybe Detroit or Indianapolis. They got the thirty fourth and the thirty fifth pick in the draft. So he may actually fall to the top of the the, the second round. How you think? Uh, yeah, I Jen, think. How you think Jalen Hurts gonna do on the next level? So you you beat me to it. So I was gonna say, um, I think with the with our first pick in that second round, the Colts are gonna go receiver, um, unless all of them are gone, and then we'll probably trade out of it. I think we're gonna try to get Jalen Hurts, but I don't know if it's gonna be with a second round pick or with a possible with that that third round pick, our first one in the third. Yeah. Would you would you use the thirty fourth pick? To take Jalen Hurts? No, but I would I would use the next one we have, which I think is like the forty first. Um, I would take I would use that one to bring in Jalen, and obviously he sits behind Philip Rivers for at least a year. Um, and then if Philip Rivers plays well, maybe he sits. You know, Philip Rivers comes back for another year, and Jalen sits for two years. But I I do like Jalen Hurts in that role as a guy who is kind of redshirting and waiting for his opportunity to take over as opposed to somebody who's coming into a situation where the team is rebuilding and then it's going to be these expectations on him to kind of be a savior. Are you still working? And I think some of that could be said for, for Jordan Love as well. Like there may be teams that are, feel he's too raw to be viewed as the franchise quarterback but they might be willing to take a chance on him if they know that they have an established quarterback who can kind of ease him in over the next year or two. Yeah, that's why I think. But, I, again, that's why I would I would have thought maybe the Green Bay because that's what, you know, that's what they did with Aaron Rodgers. But, again, I, I do agree with you. They are, you know, kind of in a win-now situation. What? We got to see what Miami does here. This is, I mean, listen, I, Miami's done pretty well with the picks. They managed to get all these picks. They, I mean, they traded away damn near everybody. They traded away, you know, their, their first-round draft picks over the last couple of years, uh, Fitzpatrick and Tunsil, to get these uh, get these draft picks, Kenny Stills as well. So, I mean, they so far so good for Miami. Um, I – I mean, I'm I'm assuming it's got to be they got they got to go defense at this point now because now you got your quarterback and your lineman. They still have a uh, Devontae uh, Parker at wide receiver, so I don't I would I don't know if they necessarily would go wide receiver right now with this pick. Um, so I'm thinking it's 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 got to be the, the defense either either Xavier McKinney or Patrick uh, Queen, one of those two guys. Yeah, there's there's too much talent on the defensive side of the ball that's still available to go offense again. Um, I think we were a little shocked when they went with the old lineman with their second first round pick. Yeah, so it's got to be defense so, now, right? At this point, I think you 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 know again it's or not because they just traded the pick. <laughs> they traded to the Packers, so maybe the Packers want to come up and get McKinney. You think? Do you think? Do you think the Packers traded up so they can pick up McKinney? Sure. Yeah. Oh that wait! Oh, sense. hold on! Wait, maybe not. Maybe they, maybe they want to take Jordan Love. I see they're showing Jordan Love on the screen. Who knows? I don't, nah, if, if the Patriots traded up to 26 to take – I mean, the Packers, the Packers, sorry, traded up to 26 to take Jordan Love, that's just a silly trade because – He Seattle, probably would have still been there. Wanna, yeah, he would have still been there. I think this is for um for Patrick Queen, actually, I think. Okay. They are on the clock. I, you know what? I I wouldn't when the teams make a trade and they're not ready with the pick right away. Like you traded because you knew who you wanted. Yeah. Like, let's go. <laughs> it's it's eleven twenty three. We are on overtime right now. <laughs> we're a triple overtime right. game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We we triple overtime. I think uh I think this is for Patrick Queen. It, it makes the most sense for the for the Packers right here. Yeah, they did like lose said, they, uh Martinez to the Giants this year, so they lost Martinez. Gotta... Yep, they lost Martinez. Like I said, they addressed their pass rush and free agency last year. They got to get better at linebacker. Um, they got really good young corners, so they, they're not looking to really add anything in their secondary, at least not yet anyway. Um, and I, I don't think you would trade up here for a receiver because I think a receiver would have still been available to you at what, what they were at, 30? At yeah, they would have still – because yeah. 
let me see out of, out of who's who's in front of them. Uh, I me, mean, I don't think Miami was. wasn't going to take a receiver, obviously. Or they would have just. Seattle, taken, I don't think it wasn't. Seattle took yeah. a, a receiver last year. And they the got first Metcalf uh, last year. He's supposed to be the, the future. Baltimore got Hollywood Brown last year in the first round, so I don't think yeah. they were going. To, well, maybe they, um, maybe Baltimore may have taken a, a wide receiver, but maybe not with this with their first pick though. I don't think they would have anyway. So I think yeah, they would have been good. Maybe Tennessee takes another wide receiver, but you know maybe I don't I think know what they do. I think this was Patrick Queen, as you mentioned. I think the Ravens were high on Patrick Queen. They were looking to bring in a guy like him at the linebacker position. And yeah. the Packers probably realized it and traded up in front of them. Um, nope. Hey, I was right. It took Jordan Love. No, that's see? a ridiculous trade. Yeah, I, I, I did behind Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I but, just had that feeling because it was the same thing they. Let me ask you again. a question. Let me ask you a question. Miami at twenty six wasn't taking them. No. Seattle at twenty seven wasn't taking them. No. Baltimore at twenty eight wasn't taking them. Definitely not. Who's at 29? Uh, Tennessee. We just confirmed that they signed Ryan Tannehill to a four-year deal. They weren't taking him. Yeah. Why? Listen, I, <laughs> it didn't make sense to me either because, we again, we just we all just sat here and, and said he would have been available at 30, yeah. which was not what I thought That's... they would have done. Um, yeah, that just it really just didn't make sense because why would you pick – None of these teams in front of you are picking the quarterback, and Miami yeah. already picked it. Maybe another team was going to jump. They probably thought another team was going to jump in front of them and take them. Oh uh, well, I mean, maybe I guess maybe that That's, that too. Yeah, that that potential is there. I, I definitely agree with that, Nesta. There may have been another team that was circling, but I, I still think if you're the Packers and you're a team this close, they were just an NFC Championship game. Yeah. To use the the first round pick on a guy who's probably going to sit behind Aaron Rodgers for at least two years. You could have gotten this guy later on. You could have just taken your chances and said, let's see if he drops us at 30. Yeah. Yeah. I, listen, again, this was... Especially we, we, when we, we, we threw the names out there earlier. You still got, you still got Jake Fromm. You still got Jacob Eason. You still got Jalen Hurts. You still got other guys that could have been the heir apparent to Rodgers that are that you could have sat for two years as well. Again, you're not yeah. drafting Jordan Love to play within the next two years anyway. Yeah, basically, maybe even longer than that. You yeah, know, get, the, get the uprising like with Aaron Rodgers before, maybe <laughs> to make it a little sooner. But yeah, no, I don't know. I, I that that's that was another mind boggler in this year's draft. So you think we think the Seahawks go right here? Someone to replace Clowney? Uh, you know what? Maybe the Seahawks take McKinney, actually. Uh, McKinley probably fits because they still haven't replaced um, Earl Thomas. Yeah, so maybe they actually go McKinley. This is my, that might actually be the perfect uh, perfect storm for them, the fact that he's still available. Either, either or, him or somebody on the end. Maybe uh, the, the kid uh, from Penn State. Um, uh, y- 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 your tour, uh, Matos, Gross yeah. Matos, or whatever. So maybe they they get a, I think a it, pass rusher just in case. I like McKinley here for the Seahawks, but I also like possibly this might be DeAndre Swift. They need yeah. a running back. Yeah, mm, they need right. a running back. They may, they may take um, a running back as well. They had a lot of injuries last year at the running back position. Remember to the point where they had to bring back Marshawn Lynch. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, Rashard Penny, Chris Carson, they really haven't worked out for those guys. Yeah. And I, I think Chris Carson is, is up for a new contract very soon, so they're going to have to make a tough choice on him. This might be the point where you take the running back um, that can come in and, and kind of fix that position for you because they, they've had no running game like the last three years. Yeah. That's basically, since Marshawn left, they haven't had one. Yeah. They, 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 they've had – their, their running game good, relies he, on. Yeah, well, he can't he, stay healthy. He hurt. Yeah, he can't stay healthy. So he, he, he can't, can't be healthy. on the field, and it don't even matter. He he can't stay healthy. Um, and like I said, they're at a point where they're going to have to make a decision on his new contract. So why why give a guy a new contract that can barely stay on the field for twelve games every year? Yeah, exactly. When you got got 
the best running back in the draft is available. He kind of pretty much fell into your yeah. lap. So I think, yeah, I think it's it's, it's going to come down to McKinley or or, or, or uh, DeAndre Swift. Yeah, I think there's a running back here. Now, they, they could get crafty and trade out of it. Um, again, because there's still so many running backs on the board. So you could trade out of it and still get great value uh, with the early second round pick if a team wants to trade into the spot. Yeah. So we shall we shall see. But they did. That's those are both two positions that they need to address. So it'll definitely be one of those. I think one of those three. I think they'll either either go for the defensive end, um, Utier, just just in case they wind up not being able to bring back Jadavian Clowney, or it'll be McKinney or DeAndre Swift. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I mean, if they bring in Jatir, that's that's pretty much them saying they know they're not bringing back Clowney. Yeah, exactly. Right, because if, if you if you use a first round pick on an end, you're probably not paying Clowney seventeen million dollars to come back. Right after that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that'll that'll be the telltale sign, as you said. If they take him, Clowney's not coming back. Um, if they go a different position, maybe they're still negotiating with Clowney. Now, if if uh, if if the Seahawks do take your tier, where do you guys think that Clowney lands then? Because now that, again, basically that's taking Seattle out of the mix. So now where does he go? Mm. I still like Buffalo for him. Um, That'd be great. Buffalo has a cap space. Yeah, Buffalo has a cap space. And um, they could do, again, just because Clowney wants 17 mil a year doesn't mean that you've got to do that over four years. You could do 17 mil over two years. You know, yeah. 17, uh, two years, 34 mil with 20 mil of that guaranteed up front, you know, and if, you, you if can it doesn't work out after this for, right, you can always finagle it. But the reason I like Buffalo the most from is because I don't think Jadavion Clowney's a, a leader. I think he's a productive guy. I think he's a game wrecker. But he's not a guy that you bring in to be a leader of your locker room. So and they don't need him to Buffalo be that works. in Buffalo. Right. And that's why I think, again, Buffalo doesn't need him for that. They, they already have a produce. great culture on the defensive end of the football. So if you come right. in and just play like an all-pro end, we'll be good. Exactly. So if you come in, you, you can get us 12 to 15 sacks. You think Clowney, how about Clowney, uh, you think he'd do good in the giant system? The New York brought him in? Nah. Mm. He'll do good he, in, he would in a do, lot of systems. Most systems he'll do good in. He'll do Giants. good, but the the problem with the with the Giants situation is the Giants would need him to be a superstar for it to work. Because yeah. if he goes to the Giants and they say he would have, you know, 12, 13 sacks, that's a good season. But for that team, that's not enough because that team needs more help on defense. Right. So to spend all that you know money on right. County. When maybe you could you could probably you could finesse the the, the the cat out of out of Jacksonville by giving up a couple right. of picks or something, you know what I'm saying? Who's a little bit cheaper? Exactly. As opposed to paying 17 million for Clowney. Now if he come down right. to 13 million, now we're talking. <laughs> then I take him. Yeah, if it's a if it's a if it's a one year deal like like 13 million, yeah, you you kick the tires on it because then if it works, great. But to invest in them, again, you're asking a guy who. He's always been this way where, you know, he, he's not a high motor guy. He's on and off. And yeah. so those type of things only work when you're on a really good team. That's why when he was with the Texans, it worked because they were always a playoff team. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if he did those type of things on a team that wasn't a playoff team, he would, he would get railroaded and he would get bashed by the, by the media. Yep. So you go to Buffalo, they got a strong locker room. They got a playoff team. All you got to do is get to the quarterback, get us 12 sacks, 13, 14, maybe even 15 sacks. Yeah. And you'll look great. You'll look great here because the rest of our defense is so good. We're not asking you to do anything other than get to the quarterback. Yeah, exactly. No, you're absolutely right. So it will be, and I know, Nessa, for you, that that that, that should be a beautiful thing for your, oh, for yeah. your bills. <laughs> yeah, but, I think Buffalo's the, the, the spot. Um. I know Tennessee was flirt flirting with the idea. Jets were flirting with the idea. Um, but there's no need. Like I said, those situations, nah, I wouldn't do it there. Buffalo, Buffalo to me makes the most sense. And it reminds me of when Mario Williams went there after the Texans. Yeah, Mario Williams, I remember that, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mario Williams had productive years for you guys. Just the yeah. team wasn't ready, the team wasn't ready to get to that next level, but he yeah. still had some really good years there. 
You just yeah. let them go there. And it, then wow, they don't they, almost him. Who they took? They took uh, Jordan Brooks. What? I'm, listen, I, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think we all kind of had the same reaction right there. <laughs> he drank what? What position he plays? He plays inside linebacker, but wow. He's the he's the fifth rank line uh rank linebacker, but you had Patrick Queen on the board cool? still. Yeah, yeah, yeah hey, Zach Vaughn. Is this the kind of injury that we don't know about? Is who have an injury um, we don't know about? Uh Queen. What's why he keeps dropping? No, I don't know. I mean, it, sometimes it could be the it's the scheme fit. Maybe he wasn't the right fit for the defense that they run. So that's a possibility. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I don't. I mean, he's on the board for the Baltimore. I don't understand. So. I don't understand why the Seahawks are taking an inside linebacker when you have Bobby Wagner. Yeah, and you you have again three other positions that you could have addressed that you yeah. need <laughs> to address, and you didn't address. But again, you, you know, you leave. That means Patrick Queen, Xavier McKinney are both on the board. And available for the Baltimore Ravens, which I'm happy about. I hope they take one of those two guys, and I'll be I'll be good. Well, yeah, if you're if you're the Ravens, I mean, this is best case scenario because all your tear is available too. They could take him as well. So either way, I'm good. You could take your tear. Um, you could take Queen. You could take McKinley. Mm -hmm. Um, they uh, McKinley maybe they won't just because again they still have Earl Thomas. Yeah. So you may not go there, but I mean, Queen fits. Patrick Queen fits really well in that situation. Yep. You know, un yeah. unless unless you feel like trading out of that spot, but if you decide to stay, I think Queen fits. No, I think they. I think they're making that pick. I don't. I don't think Baltimore trades. I think they're gonna pick one of. They they're gonna pick your tear or or Patrick Queen. Um. Again, you, you with McKinney. You know, they still got Earl Thomas there, even though he's he's getting older. But you know they're they're also a win now team as well because they want to get a Super Bowl in before Lamar Jackson's contract comes up. They want to get at least yep. one in, so they're gonna pick somebody who can help them win a Super Bowl right now. Somebody a, a quick um, either linebacker or, or or edge rusher because again you know just because you got Lamar Jackson, you still got to deal with Patrick Mahomes who can move around the field. And again, this is we're turning into the this is this is the era of the mobile quarterback. So you got to have speedy guys on that line and playing linebacker that can get to to those fast quarterbacks, and that could cover out in space. Yes, you got to have guys that can cover tight ends and running backs out in space. Exactly. So, I mean, the way it's shaping up, so Miami might still be able to get McKinley at thirty. Yeah, no. Yeah. They traded from twenty five to thirty, and they still might be able to get them because I don't think I don't think Baltimore's taking them, and Tennessee has an All Pro safety and Kevin Bayard. I don't think they're taking McKinley either. Yeah, and I don't Miami think San Fran does it. San Fran trade traded up anyway. Yeah, so the, the, the Chiefs. Right, take that's him? what I'm saying. No, I think Miami takes them at thirty. Cause remember, Miami traded oh, yeah, with San yeah, Fran. So, yeah, so, so you think, know what? They can, they I can think still they get take them. them. Ah, so it worked. Listen, it worked out. Listen, I, so far I'm giving I'm giving the Dolphins an A for their draft uh, grade. Yeah, they're working it real. If they get if they get McKinney, you know I, I got to bump up. That's gonna be an A plus because you yep. know you, you you got you got the kid you know barring the injuries who who could be the best quarterback in this draft with Tua. You got an offensive lineman to protect him. Now you go on the defensive side and you get the best safety in the draft as well. Yeah, that could be a that could be a little bit of a of a foundation. That's nice a foundation moving forward. So, and at the, again with Xavier McKinney, you know, best uh best best safety in in this draft. Could could so, Baltimore go running back here? Uh, possibly, but they. I mean, I don't know if I'm if I'm Baltimore, I go running back just because they're already stacked at at running back. With Ingram and um, Augusta, I was uh, I'm drawing a blank with his last name, but they're pretty stacked at running back. So I think if anything, maybe in the in the second or third round, because they let me see, I, think, I believe uh, Baltimore does have a second round. 
draft pick. What did they pick at in the in the second round? Yeah, they they got the they got the fifty fifth pick in the draft. So maybe they do they take a take a, a, a running back either there or even later in the draft because running backs are going to be available. Yeah, they got Gus Edwards and they got what's him Justin Hill. Remember they drafted Justin mm-hmm. Hill. Yeah, so I don't know if they that's if they would do it now. Right. I think it's got it's got it's got to be defense. They're gonna, they're going after somebody who can who can help take Mahomes down. Because <laughs> at this point, that's the team. I think gonna have to 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 beat to get to the Super Bowl. So they they gotta get get more get speedy pass rushers on the team. So either one of those two picks, I, th- I think it'll either be your Tier or, or Patrick Queen. How about wide receiver, you think they need another wide receiver in Baltimore? They do, but not here. I don't I don't think I don't think they use this pick on a, on a wide receiver. And I'm st- honestly I'm still not convinced. 100% that they don't take a chance on Antonio Brown later in the season. <laughs> there's a there's, that that that's been circulating because I think um obviously we know Hollywood Brown is there but I think Lamar even had made the comment that I guess you know he he's developed a rapport with Antonio. Um I can see it happening there honestly. They were working out. They were. They were. Listen. If they they're working out together in the off season, then that means you know one, Lamar Jackson is is okay with him, um, and then again you got you know his cousin on the other side of the side of the field. Right. So I think that'll be something where it can, you can kind of mellow Antonio Brown out a little bit just because his cousin is, is right there too. So I, I think it it could actually work. And it, could you imagine? You know, you get your you get your defensive players in the draft. You get whoever else you need to fill out. Maybe you draft a wide receiver with your with your fourth, you know, fourth or fifth round pick or whatever. But then you could still sign Antonio Brown at a discounted rate. That would be huge for the for the Ravens, and and they've already gotten so much uh, better. You know, especially on the defensive end, adding Calais Campbell. That was a, a big addition for them, adding Calais Campbell. So I do think they go again. I think this is going to be a defensive pick right now, and I think it's going to be one of those two guys. Still this dude, um, Delpit. They showed him just now. That's that safety. He's yeah, the safety, safety from LSU. I think he's in a slide. I think he's going to slide into the um into the second. Um, I think this is I think this is Patrick Queen. They just showed him uh a lot of smiling and all that into the phone. So I I have a feeling this yeah. might be Patrick Queen here. I'm happy with it if the, if it is. I think I mean the Ravens always do really well in the draft, and you know if they're able to add a guy like Patrick Queen. Yep, there we go. That's just another quality guy. Got him. I'll take it. Yep, that's my team in Madden, so I'm good now. <laughs> Second best uh, linebacker in the draft. So listen. I'm 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 happy about yeah, this. Yeah, that's that's again that's a great value at 28 to get a guy like he's gonna start from day one. So yep. to get that type of guy at 28, that's yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm I'm, I'm happy about this. Happy for the for the Ravens. I mean, they're they're already gonna be a top team in the AFC again this year with the additions that they made. Uh, that Lamar Jackson's gonna be you know he's gonna come back be better. The rest of those guys, Andrews, I think their, their chemistry will continue to get better. Ingram had a really good season for them. So, you know, now to get that, get him, this the second best linebacker in the draft, this late in the draft, that's yep. pretty pretty good for them. Now, I want to know, do you, do you think Tennessee goes offense or, or defense? Uh, good question. Uh, I, I think they're candidates to trade out of this spot. Um, they got to figure out some cap things there. Uh, obviously, that's why they let go or they traded, I should say, Jarrell Casey to Denver. Remember, they they still trying to work on a long term deal with Henry. They just gave Tannehill his money. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if they traded out of this spot. Um, but if they keep it, I would think that they're probably going to go defense. Like corner? Uh, possibly. I, they AJ Brown was a first round pick for them last year. Um, they don't. They have needs on offense, but nothing too pressing. And I don't think they would reach on a receiver at this point. 
I think this would be more about getting a defensive guy who, who could probably help them and play right now for them. If they keep the pick, like I said, I, I think, I think well, they're prime McKinney is, is still available now. So do they, you think they go safety and take the, the best safety in the draft? McKinley, the only issue with that is, like I said, they have Kevin Bayard, who's an all-pro safety already. The strength of their team is their secondary with Bayard, with um, Logan Ryan, um, mm. Malcolm Butler. So they – I think, like I said, they, they, they would probably go save – I mean, uh, defense, I just don't know if it would be in their secondary. I think it would probably be somewhere else on their defense. Um, but I, I think maybe, they maybe, trade maybe, out of this. Maybe, maybe, oh, they, the pick maybe they go your tear. I think the, the pick is in. Yeah, maybe they go your tear. Help out on that uh, defensive line. Let me see. So on a defensive line, that's a great point because, again, they were in discussions about going after um, Clowney. Yeah. So if they can get um, now the, the, the top defensive end in the draft, that's right. a hell of a discount get, right. <laughs> from that $17 million. Yeah. Right. You get your tear here. That fills a need. Your tear makes a lot of sense right here for them. Yeah. I, and they're, they're, they're more, well, we still got a couple more minutes before they uh they they make the pick, and then yeah, if they do, I, th- I, th- I think we'll wind up seeing Yatir, and then followed by McKinney finally getting off the board. <laughs> he been he been sitting there for too long. It's it's, it's been a, it's been a rough road <laughs> for him. And then back to to Minnesota. Let's see who 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 who, uh, who, who the Minnesota is gonna take. Make sure, uh, guys, t- uh, next week uh, we'll be airing the uh, Donche Hopkins interview. She came on with us, um, just updating us with uh, everything that's been going on in Hollywood right now, as far as the all effects from the coronavirus and a couple other things. So that's going to actually air next Thursday. Shout out to OG King Kurt. Uh, if you guys were watching tonight. I'm sure you guys were. We had part two aired of the interview with with the the general manager and head coach of the Nets gaming crew, OG King Kerr. So that aired tonight. And we got a couple more surprises, man. We 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 in this is quarantine TV. We got we got a whole lot of stuff that we're gonna be uh putting out there. We got Smush Parker that's gonna be joining us uh soon as well. And you know, we don't have no basketball, so we're gonna have to talk about a whole lot of basketball. With uh with Smush when he comes on as well, so definitely make sure you guys stay tuned in. Realfansrealtalk.com. Uh, so much new content has been posted up within the last couple of weeks. Uh, new new uh, vlogs from uh, from from Eric, of course, and uh, Urban Sports Guru on the site. Uh, CJ was put up a couple of joints as well. She broke down the WNBA uh, draft, and she's got another vlog that's going to be dropping later this week as well. So make sure you guys are on that website, realfansrealtalk.com. And again, follow us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash realfansrealtalk. Twitter, Instagram, at realfantalk. And subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to that YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash for the fans productions. Kurt Warner looking, looking, looking a little old there. <laughs> I mean, Kurt, Kurt about he about late forties, early fifties, probably at this point. All right, that's my guy too. You know, Super Bowl champion. Who was it? He was in. Who the, the hell is standing behind Mike Vrabel though? Uh, so I was somebody in his family. Yeah, he he wilding with that. Um, we got <laughs> we got to go back in. <laughs> he wilding with that. You, you think you think in a surprise uh, pick the Titans take a uh, running back and then trade uh, Derrick Henry? Um, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna put it like this. I I would I don't want to say I would be surprised because again anything can happen. But Derrick Henry is their offense, <laughs> so. If if <laughs> if you're bold enough to take a running back here and then try to flip Derrick Henry, uh, you you got a lot of faith in Ryan Tannehill. But then again, shit, they just gave him four years, uh, so uh, apparently they do. Yeah, well they 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 go offensive tackle anyway, uh, so they 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 want to protect their investment <laughs> in Ryan Tannehill. Right. So yeah, so that 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 was out of the window anyway. Um, 
And so back to back to uh back to Miami now the, the Titans try to protect their uh the 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 quarterback. Um right. Yeah, well listen, you gotta keep the quarterback safe. So I mean they, they drafted AJ Brown last year, so they got their wide receiver. Uh, you know, Derrick Henry's gonna be with the team at least for another year after signing the uh the franchise tag. So, you know, they gotta keep those guys safe. And you gotta, you know, shoot. And that can only help Derrick Henry more more offensive linemen. So help him get back out there. Anybody yeah, I, I, anybody that's still on the board that you surprised is still on the board? It, it's not that I'm um, I'm so much surprised, just because I know it's just it's it's about need. Um, but of course, probably just McKinney McKinney was probably be the only one who's who's like on the board that I'm a little bit surprised at. But again, it, it just comes down to need. So I'm not really too surprised that he's still on the board. I'm um yeah yeah I, I agree I'm I'm surprised McKinley's still on the board, um because of where he was rated and then also the fact that we've seen a couple teams that can use secondary help pass on him, so I'm definitely surprised McKinley's still on the board. I don't think he'll last past this Miami pick because I I just think that the fit is too perfect here. Yeah. Um, I'm also a little surprised Winfield is still on the board as well again these are guys who highly touted the secondary guys and unless uh there was something that came up in the interview process or something that we don't know about maybe uh you know undisclosed injury or something that that's holding these guys back because we're seeing other guys that are not as highly rated as them already come off the board that's yeah. a little surprising um we're, we're down to the last three picks of the night I don't, I don't know if Miami would be willing to take a running back. I, I, I know Minnesota wouldn't take a running back at thirty-one. We're in a position where Kansas City might end up with DeAndre Swift, yo. Which would be crazy. Now I will, right. I will say like, this, Eric. You mentioned the kid, um, the the one kid behind Mike Vrabel and what he's wearing. I'm a little bit more surprised about the other kid with the Joe Exotic haircut. Yes, your man got the – he went to the barber and said, give me the Joe Exotic um, <laughs> mullet. <laughs> what, what number is that on the board? <laughs> uh, well, uh, that's a 60, 65 uh, or something. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's in that range, you know what I'm saying? Joe, Joe, Joe Exotic type cut. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what's little, it's a, it's a little wild, but uh, I guess, you know, Mike Rabel, you know, the family's feeling themselves. They went to an AFC championship game, you know. Yeah, listen, you're a wild boy. Imagine, <laughs> imagine if DeAndre Swift to the, to the Chiefs, bro. Think about that for a second, guys. The best running back on the board <laughs> in the draft, Goes landing with a team most. that. And that's I the mean, spot that they needed filled the most goes to the team that already has an embarrassment of riches. They yeah. don't need any more weapons. Well, listen, it's a, it's, a, it's a big chance that that might actually go down unless um, unless Miami doesn't take um, McKinney and then maybe they, they, they help out, they pick up somebody on the defensive end because Kansas City still has holes in their defense that, that they do need to fill. But if I'm Kansas City and at 32nd pick in the draft, and DeAndre Swift is still on the board, I'm taking I'm taking DeAndre Swift because that's an area that hasn't really been addressed since uh, since Kareem Hunt. That's a, that's a great point, and so Kansas City may view it two ways. So DeAndre Swift may be the guy they want to go with, and he probably makes the most sense. However, if McKinley is still there, drafting McKinley means they don't have to resign Tyron Matthew. Yep, so you can save that money. So they may view it that way because, as we know, there's only but so much money to go around. And you gotta Mahomes' get... contract is coming up. Mahomes got to get his 200-plus million. Exactly. So is that actually – it could work out perfect. I mean, I, I, I don't see Miami passing on him right now. But if they do, and he can, and he can fall, and I'm Kansas City. Now it changes things. Now I got to weigh this thing out because, again, like you said, you know, you have your your your, your safety of the future. Tyrant Matthew is going to cost a lot of money to to keep, 
and you get him for one more year. So you get him to go, you can have another Super Bowl run. And you got McKinney as the backup <laughs> right there as well. So that secondary is going to be even crazier. Well, I, th- I think if they if they get McKinley, they don't even bring back Tyron Matthew because they have uh, uh, Juan Thornhill. No, no, I'm just saying. For, I'm saying for this year, they have him for this year for this for the Super because right. this, they gotta they gotta they gotta win again right now, just because once uh, once Mahomes' contract is up and you gotta pay him that money, somebody's some areas is gonna suffer on oh, the team. A lot so of areas, yeah, a lot league. of areas are gonna suffer. I so think they they've now. shown us. The way the way they've drafted, um, and I use this comparison recently, the way they've drafted is very similar to the way the Colts were drafting when they draft when they originally had Peyton Manning, and and that the Colts kept using first round picks on their offense. Edgerrin James first round pick, Reggie Wayne first round pick, Dallas Clark, you know all these guys. They kept loading up the offense because the thinking was we've already invested in our quarterback, so now we got to get the weapons. Mm-hmm. The Chiefs have kind of taken that similar mold because Nicole Hardman, a high draft pick. Tyreek yeah. Hill, high draft pick. Sammy, Sammy Watkins got his money. You know what I'm We're saying? We're going to run up the numbers. Gearing, right. We're gearing up the offense so that there is no excuse for our quarterback to not be successful. Yeah. And so, they can win still with an average defense and the best offense in football. Correct. Correct. So – if they're able to get a guy like McKinney or Antoine Winfield, another guy who's really good in the secondary, they may be able to alleviate some of the money they had to spend on that secondary and, yeah, I, and still keep their offense intact. I don't know. This if, is, this if, is if lining Winfield up makes for them. This is lining up for them pretty good. I, yeah, I think it's, um, it's going to wind up being swift just because I don't I, – like, if, if Miami takes McKinney here, I, I – I gotta believe that Minnesota's taking Winfield right after that. Yeah, and then as I'm watching Mel Kiper speak now, you know I feel even better about my Colts with their pick in the second round because I know Michael Pittman Jr. is still on the board. Um, we got um, Denzel Mims still on the board, so yeah, there's a good like couple of options. big receivers left. Yeah. Second round, which which pick you have? Um, the second round. Second pick, second pick in the second round. Oh, right there, as soon as it starts. Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. so we 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 desperately need a receiver to go with T. Y. Hilton. That's our biggest need. So to be able to get one of these guys, if we can land Michael Pittman Jr. or Denzel Mims at that spot, it probably that, will. that's a huge that's a huge win for us because we sacrificed our first round pick to be able to get Forrest Buckner to strengthen our defensive line. So yeah. we would have been able to address our defensive line and our offensive line within the first two rounds of the draft. What are your thoughts yeah. on Paris Campbell? He was supposed to be um, a high wide receiver coming out last year. Paris Campbell, you like him? I, I like him, um, but he's got to stay healthy. He's a, he's a speed demon. He gets down the field. Um, I, I think the kid has talent, but he can't stay on the field. He missed seven games last year. You know what I'm saying? He's got to stay healthy. But ultimately, at this point, if, if he can at least stay healthy and then we add another guy to the mix, because we lost Eric Ebron, so yeah. right now at tight end, we're going with Jack Doyle and we signed um, Trey Burton, who's with the Bears. So we, we took a step back at the tight end position. Jack Doyle is more of a blocking tight end. He's not going to wow you with any pass catching ability. But if we can add a receiver to go with T.Y. and if Paris Hilton can stay healthy, then we might have some because I think Marlon Mack is developing into a really good running back. Oh, he was amazing. But I we mean, need you know, a, barring a little ticky tack injuries, but he was amazing last season. Yeah. yeah, Marlon Mack has, has been really good the last two years. Um, you know, two years ago when we when we made the playoffs, Marlon Mack was a big reason for that. He he went off in the second half of the season, and then last year he had a good year. He ran, I think, for 1,100 yards last year. But we got to get that other receiver on opposite of T.Y. Because T.Y. Hilton just sees double teams everywhere we go. No matter who we're playing, you just double T.Y., take him out the game, and then force other guys to beat you. And yeah, right now, nobody, we don't have that other guy. Left. Right. We don't have that other guy that can beat you. So if we can add another guy who at least puts enough threat to open up things for T.Y. and open up things for Marlon Mack, then it changes things for us. Yeah, well, listen, you, you we still got – wow, they, they went with a – they went with – no. Oh my, they picked a cornerback. They didn't even take McKinney. So now, now, now it's going to be interesting because now you got Winfield and McKinney still on the board 
and you got Minnesota and Kansas City coming up. So now, I don't know if they, they you know, that, that running back, that might have just changed things. Maybe they don't take DeAndre Swift now. Yeah, so with, with this pick, then Kansas City is not taking DeAndre Swift. I don't think. Yeah, if you can't say that you can't, you gotta you gotta address the, the defense. That's because you, you don't need a running back right now. That's just like all right, yeah, we you know we add on, but it's more important think, for them to, to to find a replacement think, for Tyran Matthew. I don't have it opened up in front of me, Trip. You do, but I I also believe this is another reach because Gladney from TCU, I believe, was rated higher than this kid. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh yes he was he's way higher than this is yeah. the eighth ranked yeah uh, and, and Gladney I believe was the fifth rank but you know you know what I think sometimes teams because the the teams that play in the SEC is the toughest division so I think even though he's ranked lower they look at the the the, the conference that he plays in and they will probably give him a little bit of points just because of the level of competition because you, you got you know. You're going to go up against the, the Alabamas, the, the LSUs, and those top teams, you know, so that can, maybe they give him a little bit more weight just because of that, because he plays in the SEC. I mean, he, he got he got top-notch speed, so he's definitely a guy who can cover all types of receivers. He's not the guy that's going to get beat over the top. But, but like again, I said, you had I, Trayvon I, Diggs from Alabama was available yeah, too. Trayvon Diggs, yeah. Right. You had Trayvon Diggs, and like I said, I like Gladney from TCU. I thought Gladney from TCU was was good enough to be a late first round pick. Um, he was rated higher than this kid right here. Again, Miami uh, Miami sees something in him that maybe other people don't, and this also could be based on what they want to do as a team. Yeah. Brian Flores is a defensive minded coach, so if he feels like, yo, look, I need guys who can just play man to man and have that top end speed, then this guy fits. Yeah. You know, I, I'm always, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm always a little skeptical of guys who play in the secondary for these big programs because a lot of times their front sevens are really good. Yeah. So, so it's a little bit less pressure. But unless you play for yeah, Alabama. I mean, you play for Alabama then. It, and not only less pressure, but also, I mean, and, and not to take away from the kid's skills, but playing cornerback when four of your front seven guys are, are, are all going to the league becomes a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't have to cover as long because I know Derek Brown, who was his teammate, is going to get to the quarterback in two seconds. So exactly. I ain't got I, I, I to really run around with this receiver much. I just got to stay close yep. enough to make a play. And he's going to consume two to three guys. <laughs> so Right, you know what I'm saying? So I, I'm, I'm a little surprised by it, especially because of the other guys that are still on the board. Um, we keep talking about McKinney and, and Winfield. I, I gotta say, because well, I mean, just because his father plays for them, I gotta go, you know, with uh, with Winfield to the Vikings right here, because that this is the legacy pick. Let me see. I, I gotta see, but I, I think they, they they take Winfield. And it's crazy. This guy was drafted, was actually rated higher than the, the other our net our net guy that we looked at. That, 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 that went, went, went earlier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that went earlier. Yeah. Um. Oh well, no, no, I they agree. take they take Gladney. Wow, this is this is crazy. Minnesota takes Gladney. Well, Gladney's the guy I've been I've been saying his name for a little bit. I like him. I think I think this kid is really good, and I I think this is a, a very good pick for the Vikings based on what we talked about earlier. They lost Trey Waynes. They lost Xavier Rhodes. This kid is going to start from day one. Mike Zimmer, being a defensive minded coach, he would know better than any of us what it takes to be a starting caliber guy. If he, I, I'm I'm telling you, I like this kid. I think yeah. he's going to start with them. Right away. Well, they they got him listed as the the best uh, slot corner in the draft, and he's the third ranked overall cornerback in this in this draft. So, so what does uh thing do here? Take a safety, one of the safeties. Uh, uh yeah, I I think Kansas City takes McKinney, and and that way they don't have to worry about uh paying um Teron Matthew. Yeah. And the if you look at the year. highlights from McKinney. Like I said, McKinney's the uh, – I'm sorry, this kid, uh, Gladney's the truth, man. I, I like him a lot. Yeah. Listen, you can't, you, can't, you can't go wrong either way. If they were to pick McKinney, you get the best safety in the draft. You go, you go with Gladney, you get, you get a top three cornerback in the draft. Can't be mad. They got their wide receiver, and they got their cornerback now. 
So I think they 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 did pretty good. And now we have I a think, perfect yeah. storm for the for the Chiefs to draft McKinney. I think um th- I think Minnesota's done really well for themselves in this draft. Yeah. I really think Minnesota's to to be able to get Justin Jefferson where they got him at and then get Gladney at 31. Yeah. Those both those guys are going to start on his team immediately. Like right. they filled two needs in the first round of the draft. Yeah. Yeah. The most important ones, you, you, that, that's what they needed to do. They're good now. I, I, I will say, it is, I'm not a thing about it with the virtual whole virtual draft thing. At least, you know, it's actually good from the standpoint of, you know, you don't got to be that guy that you thought she was going in the first round and you get stuck there at the end of the draft. Yeah. You already know what I'm saying. So it ain't going to be too bad. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got one more pick left in this in, in the will first it, round. It be, will it be a running back or are they out? It's either going to be it's either going to be DeAndre Swift or Xavier McKinney. It's, it's, it's one of those two. I, I can't like I I can't see them going any other direction with this pick. It's either gonna be we're gonna take our running back of the future, or we're gonna take our our, our safety of the future, and our replacement. I think it's the safety. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, it's the safety. Yeah. When when is when his career is done? You pick, when when his career is done, how many rings do Mahomes gonna have? <laughs> well, that's a uh, rough one because it's so young. Yeah, it, it's it's a tough question, but I think they've got the potential. Um, to at least win two more. Two more? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he's I mean he's good enough to say he can win more than that, but you I mean you just don't know how the team is gonna be gonna work out after he gets his the, next contract. You think, I think Andy, the fact that he said himself Andy Reid needs to stay around to um for him to be successful? I think Andy Reid sticks around um for a few more years and then if if possible, they hand it over to Eric Bianami, who's the offensive coordinator now. Yeah, and, I don't, and I don't think he needs to be the there in order has... for Mahomes to be good, though. Mahomes is going to do his thing. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think that. Um, I, I but it, I think this is where you take a safety. Um, because there's going to be all the running backs in the second round. The Chiefs can always address that area. Then in the second round, yeah, you can always find a way to trade in and get one of those guys in the second round. So you may even be able to trade back up <clears throat> and get DeAndre Swift in the second round and, and because right. I think you can get him in the middle of the second round. I'm looking at the who's the who's the first couple of picks. Cincinnati, they got Joe Mixon, they're not taking a running back. The Colts have Marlon Mack, they're not taking a running back. Maybe right. Detroit takes a running back. So maybe, you know what I'm saying? Maybe you might want to try to get up trade trade a spot with, with Cincinnati. Um to come back up, but not even, they, I, not even. You could, you could, you could trade up into, um, what the Patriots traded down to thirty-seven. You could, I think, you can get into that range and still get one of the really good running backs, as you mentioned, because Cincinnati's not taking one, Indianapolis is not taking one. Um, Patriots yeah. drafted Sony Michelle in the first round a few years ago, so they're not taking one. You could get anywhere. You can get anywhere. I think from like thirty-eight to like forty, forty-one, and still be able to either get Swift. J.K. Dobbins, uh, Hilaire, as you mentioned earlier. There's, there's going to be a lot Taylor's of guys. Available. Yeah, Taylor. There's going to be a lot of guys that the Chiefs could try to trade into the second round and still get without having to jump too far up to get them. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. That's good. Well, you know what? What I actually what I, what I like about this is now at least maybe one of the Giants could pick up another safety in the draft too. One of those cats will be available still. Uh, Winfield this, this, or uh, yeah. McKinney. Whichever I was thinking the same thing because I'm, like I said, uh, the Colts got 34, and I believe we're back on the board again at 41. Mm-hmm. Um, there's going to be potential 44. for us. Oh, so we're at 34 and 44. Um, because of the way it's playing out, I mean, I don't know if we would take McKinney at 34 because we have Malik Hooker. Um, but I think we would at least be in play for somebody at 44 if they continue to drop. If, if Winfield continue to drop, I think the Colts should definitely make a move on Winfield. Yeah. I, I, as You think they should take Winfield at 34 as opposed to a wide receiver? 
No, I would I would prefer a receiver at 34 because, um, like I said, we, we made the investment in Malik Hooker two years ago um, as our safety. So I wouldn't reach at 34. But if mm-hmm. you're if we get to the range again of 37, 38, 39, and yeah. the safeties are still there, I would like to see the Colts move up and make a play on Winfield or McKinney if he's still there. Either one of those guys. Yeah, because it. What? Well, yeah, we gonna wait. The Chiefs pick us up in a second. But I, I, yeah. I just can't. I can't see them I, skipping over McKinney right now. Just because I, I again, like, makes, like yeah. you said, with the you know he the whole Tyrant Matthew issue, and you got a chance to get the best safety in this draft. So why not? Yeah. All right, let's see who y'all taking. Pick us up. I mean, but Andy Reid might shock. Andy Reid might shock us all and take Denzel Mims, <laughs> and add another receiver. <laughs> Were right. It's like, bro, we didn't have enough spots on the line to <laughs> play all these dudes. <laughs> well, I don't care. You know, Andy Reid. Andy Reid wow, out there playing flag they football. took Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Oh, my goodness. Wow, that's crazy. See, I, man, Andy Reid, he definitely shot me with this pick because you just skipped over, like, the top three, four running backs in the, in the draft. Maybe he see something inside me like that he likes. Yeah, yeah I, well, uh, well, you know what? Actually, yeah, I, I, I mean, he's the best pass catching running back in the draft. So yeah, he likes that. Yeah, so that's that's what it is. I well, and, and I guess he's the, he's actually the second the second best uh, running back in the draft anyway. So wow, I'm surprised I didn't take DeAndre Swift though. But yeah, they want somebody you know that, that Mahomes can pass to. Right, right. So we got to look at Andy Reid's history he was responsible for dra- drafting brian westbrook yeah and shady mccoy yep yeah. that's a fact so You're right he he he's got like i said he's got a, he's got a certain eye for what he wants his running back to be um this is a guy trip that you you started the night talking about this guy um in the second round um yeah and he squeaks into the first and you know what this is a that perfect landing spot for him this, yeah, because this I don't think that, offense. That he'd still be on the on the board, but this is perfect for him. I just yeah. I really didn't I didn't think I I didn't think that that and, DeAndre and, Swift would would not have got drafted first, being that he's the best running back in this draft. I I I, I thought he. I mean, and it's not that it's a crazy crazy gap, but he is clearly the best running back, and I and and I thought he was the only first round running back in the draft. But again, I you know it's also what you need, and you did bring up a great point with you, these are the type of running backs that Andy Reid drafts. He's, he's been doing it <laughs> for years. So, yep. yeah, Brian Westbrook, Shady McCoy, these are the type of running backs that he drafts. I'm, I'm a little surprised just from the standpoint of, as we talked about, the, the ability to be able to replace Tyron Matthew. Um, but I'm not surprised they went running back because we were talking about a few picks ago that I, I thought Swift could be in play for them right here. Yeah. This indeed. is just another – this is a great pick for them, though, and this is a guy who, who's going to fit in perfectly for them. Yeah. Because Damian Williams wasn't wasn't going to be the long-term starter anyway. Yeah. Exactly. And, again, you know, with, with Swift, Swift is, is, is the best pure running back in the draft, but, you know, they, they, they like that pass-catching running back. Andy Reid likes the pass-catching running back. I'm still a little bit surprised that he doesn't go safety here, especially because again, they're they're gonna, you know, somebody somebody can't make the cut, <laughs> okay? Right. You can't pay, you can't give Mahomes two hundred something million, and then you're gonna have to pay Tyran Matthew as a top corner because he's an All Pro uh, safety, so you're gonna have to pay him a lot of money to keep him as well. So I would have thought they would have taken the best safety in the draft, but again. The Giants pick high in that second round. So I'm hoping that now Winfield and McKinley are still available. I'm hoping that the Giants can get one of those two guys because, again, I don't see the Colts going safety with their pick. Um, we're not. I, yeah, I, I, I can almost guarantee you we're not. We're going receiver without pick. Yeah. And the same thing with the with with the Lions. I don't see them going safety right now either. The only you know, so the only team I'm really worried about that's in front of us maybe would be the Bengals because I know they're probably going to want to work on their defense. 
um, now that they got the, they got their quarterback. But you know, again, you got Winfield available, and you got uh, McKinney available still. So one of those guys, potentially, maybe even both of those guys, will be available when the Giants pick. And I'm and I'm okay with with either one of those guys. I agree. I think um, there's going to be a lot of great options for the uh, second round. Um, don't count out the Lions at safety um, because I, I believe they had traded away their safety last year, Quinn. Um, so don't count them out. They could be in the mix. Well, However, I think I think the they're going to go running back though with that pick, and especially since now that DeAndre Swift is still now, available, yes. I, I think they take DeAndre Swift now at that at that pick because again, like you I say, agree. Colts go wide receiver. But I think coming right after them, I know the, the Bengals are not going to take a running back because they got Joe Mixon already. So now mm-hmm. it comes down to, all right, Detroit, we got DeAndre Swift on the board. We lucked up. There we go. Which means that yeah, those two be- those safety spots are wide open for the Giants to take. And then I'll be happy. A lot if of they talent. <laughs> Did that be happy? A lot of talent on the second. Yeah, a lot of talent on the second round. Yeah. Exactly. But listen, guys, it is late. It's 12 15. We went into quadruple overtime because we love you guys so much at home. We wanted to make sure that we got through the entire first round. Eric got his charger. I got my charger. And that's got his charger. Everything is, is good. Uh, really quick final thought. Next, we're going to start with you. Uh, uh, some, some, it's, it's different. I didn't, I, a lot of guys uh, dropped. To the second round that I thought would have been drafted to the in, in, the, in the first round, so I'm interested in seeing you know what happens in round two. Oh yeah, definitely. We we may we may pop up and give y'all a little little round two to uh, run down. We'll see we'll see how it goes. It's been a long night. Okay, we got we got to get some maybe rest we, and come back. Yeah yeah maybe maybe we jump on after after the the round is over. Maybe we give our thoughts on some of the guys and where they landed. Do a little quick, yeah. Especially, y'all, I'll let y'all know if, I, if I'm happy because the Giants got uh, Xavier McKinney. <laughs> but uh, listen, guys, again, for myself, Trip Young, Legend in Two Games, and of course, Nesta, we definitely appreciate you. Always appreciate you coming through and chopping it up with us. Yeah. Make sure you guys are tuned in each and every Thursday, 8 to 9 p.m., Verizon 43, all throughout New York City. If you are not in the New York City area, all you got to do is log on to the website, realfansrealtalk.com, and you can watch live right from the website from anywhere in the world. With that being said, we up out of here, man. Peace. This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants Super Bowl champ, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk.